Well, is Syria a narco state that needs to be invaded and occupied and sanctioned by Western countries like the United States and Great Britain? Well, if you read mainstream corporate media, of course, you'd think that that's the case. Here's the BBC. Syria's economy built on drugs. Uh, here's the sun. ISIS terrorists taking superhuman drugs that make them charge at tanks. So now they're ISIS are super soldiers. Or my favorite, uh, it's a great, great liberal magazine, The Economist, which might actually be worse than the BBC if that's possible. Here's The Economist headline, Syria has become a narco state. Um, so we wanted to ask Vanessa Bealey, who knows all about this. She joins us from Damascus, Syria right now, and her reporting has been second to none on this, and asks the question in a recent Substack article, Vanessa, that you wrote, the BBC appears to work in lockstep with the United States and the UK deep state to facilitate new raft of sanctions against Syria. So we thought we'd ask you what actually is going on here. Has Syria descended into a narco state that needs the United States to invade it to save you? Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, this is quite extraordinary. It's multi-layered, of course, as all of this is. Trial by the BBC, the BBC documentary um, is basically the report that much of this information is based on. Uh, and the BBC documentary, which was put out, I think, about a year ago, was effectively in collaboration um, with a media outlet, OCCRP, which of course is funded by the UK Foreign Office, by NED, the National Endowment for Democracy, of by USAID. They worked in collaboration with two media outlets in uh, southern Syria, where of course we have this Israeli, US, UK backed separatist movement. Uh, happening right now for some time. Uh, and those media outlets are backed respectively by Qatar and Saudi Arabia. So you had a real conglomeration um, of entities that have, in, in effect, tried to secure a regime change in Syria since 2011, fail. And so what is happening is we're having raft after raft of sanctions to collectively punish the Syrian people. Because of course we know that sanctions are always designed to do that, to effectively increase the unrest and, and uh, the, the displeasure with whichever government is being targeted for removal by the West. But I think we also um, have to look closely at who was behind these uh, bills. First of all, the anti-normalization uh, with President Assad and now uh, the Captagon Act, which again is, is claiming, as you said, Syria is a failed state, a narco state. Uh, Assad's family is basically running uh, this drug cartel inside Syria. And the incredible claim by the BBC that has then been disseminated uh, throughout uh, legacy media that uh, Syria is making around 57 billion from the Captagon market. Well, if you bear in mind that Jordan's entire GDP is less than 50 billion, and in 2021, the claim was that the Captagon market in Syria was worth around 5.7 billion. So did they just move the decimal point? Right. Basically, right. But let's have a look, if we can, really quickly at who's behind this bill, because I think that's really important for people to understand why this is happening. Of course, as I said, it's a long line of uh, unprecedented sanctions that have been designed to collectively punish the Syrian people, and it's working. Um, but this one of the sponsors of this bill was a congressman called French Hill. French Hill has created a, a kind of... Um, a law conglomeration called Peace Through Strength in the 21st Century. I'll leave you to comment on that title of it. Um, now, this includes rebuilding economic prosperity for Ukrainians that I would argue is a de facto narco state, thanks to Western money laundering and, and enablement and, and facilitation of the drug trade inside Ukraine holding Iranian leaders accountable, number two, and number three, suppressing the illegal captagon trade. Um, and these laws are designed, pushed through and accelerated by Zionist-backed uh, American-based Syrian lobbyists, like in this case, the American Coalition for Syria. 
Um, so they were voted through the House of Representatives, 364, 58 against, in order to put sanctions against offenders. But who are the offenders? This is the important question. According to the BBC, its president Assad and, and his cohorts inside Syria, according to Syrians, these drugs were coming into Syria as far back as 2011, 2012. Um, Captagon, which is a, a phenethylene, which is basically a form of amphetamine, it inhibits the adrenaline inhibitor in the body. Like so an basically ecstasy. Kind of, yeah, your adrenaline keeps pumping. It, there's, there's no cutoff point. So you do literally create these superhuman uh, soldiers. And I, I mean, I have multiple uh, kind of testimonies uh, about, you know, the ISIS and Al Qaeda fighters being literally pumped full of bullets and still standing, still fighting, still coming forward, etc. Wow. Uh, quite incredible from both uh, Lebanon and inside Syria and Syria so from around 2013. The, the adrenaline just keeps pumping. So their bodies just keep moving, yeah. whether or not their brain is even really functioning. They're shot full of so ISIS, Al Qaeda. Yeah. Using yeah. this to just run right and, towards tanks. And of course, um, it was used to give to suicide bombers. So particularly the, the Saudi backed uh, Wahhabi element. Um, like ISIS, but also various offshoots of, of ISIS and Al Qaeda. Now they're um, claiming were given this drug, and they're claiming that this is Assad, that this is the Assad <laughs> regime that's providing ISIS and Al Qaeda fighters with this captagon, this ecstasy like adrenaline pumping to create these ISIS uh, superheroes, basically. But that couldn't be further from the truth, right? <laughs> well, I mean, this is ridiculous. This is like the chemical weapons claims. And actually, right. in the article that you sent me, it, it's put into context with the claims of sarin attacks by the Syrian government, which, of course, have been uh, absolutely debunked by various experts, including the OPCW inspectors themselves, the dissident inspectors. And so for me, you know, this is the same dilemma. Is Assad going to be producing the drugs that are then sold to the terrorists that are killing his people? In the same way, is Assad going to be using sarin gas, his stocks of which were destroyed in 2013-14 uh, in, in agreement with the UN and Russia? But is he going to be using sarin gas against his own people as his army is advancing to liberate those people? You know, it's, it's the same ridiculous argument. And if we come back to French Hill, let's see his involvement in Syria itself. So he's responsible for the Captagon Act. He's responsible for the anti-normalization with President Assad Act, which is designed to prevent, to, to basically further politically and economically isolate Syria, right, from potential allies in the region that might come to the help of Syria to help it rebuild after 12 years war. But this is a congressman who also came to Syria in August 2023 entered illegally, just like John McCain did in uh, 2013 with the Syrian Emergency Task Force, and met with and fraternized with Al-Qaeda in the Northwest and their affiliates in the White Helmet. He also supported the separatist movement in the South and uh, allegedly had phone conversations with the leaders of the separatist movement, which, as I've mentioned, is backed by uh, the U.S. and Israel in order to uh, secure southern Syria under a, a separatist um, uh, regime similar to what they've done in the Northeast using the Kurdish Contras to, to basically create what they call an autonomous region. So this is not someone whose, um, let's say, credibility is not compromised because he has a clear, he has clear skin in the game, right? Well, you've got to give and him credit. I mean, he, he, he just yeah, wanted right. to go and see where his money was going, right? We, the funding of Al Qaeda. <laughs> so U.S. money going to fund yeah, Al Qaeda exactly. and ISIS for years. So he wants to go see is his money doing its job to foment uh, a revolution inside of Syria and to use that money to, of course, try to overthrow Assad. It's all part of the plan. So mm. uh, 
I mean, what is happening to the Syrian people? I mean, this is at the heart of all of it, right? These sanctions have just been absolutely crushing to the Syrian people. It was, as we've talked about here on this show extensively, one of the safest countries in the world, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And when I say that, I see comments from our viewers They're like, yep, you're absolutely right about that. Safe, 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 beautiful. And then we come in and destroy it and place sanctions and try to upend this apple cart. Um, so how are the Syrian people dealing with these sanctions and now the potential for this new raft of sanctions? Well, I think it's also important to note that pre-2011, Syria was pretty much drug-free. It was something that, that was, you know, very much uh, frowned upon by the Syrian government and, and there was crackdown on any uh, drug supply inside Syria and it was pretty much drug-free. Since uh, the start of uh, the regime change war in 2011, I mean, I've spoken with the head of the psychiatric hospital in, in East Aleppo that was occupied by the Western-backed um, terrorists, including Al-Qaeda. And he told me after liberation in December 2016, the biggest issue that they were dealing with was drug addiction, which was something that they never had before the Western armed groups. Um, came in and occupied, uh, you know, districts of, of Aleppo, both in the West and in the East. Um, and, and if you remember, um, after the U.S. invaded Afghanistan was when we saw the opium trade increase exponentially. Right. Under the Taliban, it, there, there was no um, opium trade. Opioid. And, and who is the biggest user of opioids in the world today? It's the United States. The United States economy benefits from what is it around 500 billion from the drug trade globally. And if we go back to, to Nixon, because I was reading up on that this morning, you know, in 1971, he started uh, the war on drugs. Well, very much like the war on terror, what's happened since the war on drugs, hmm. drug abuse globally has increased exponentially following the war on terror, terrorism globally has increased backed by the us and the uk and the eu cartel and the gulf states and israel and so on well, sorry we love you our... mentioned about the syrian people but yeah you know, but we, we it, love our wars on things right whenever we whenever the united states launches a yeah. war war on you know uh war on climate change whatever it is right you know that there's mm -hmm. going to be billions of dollars funneled into that uh, into that effort yeah. and it's only going to get worse of course um, and some people are going to get very, very rich off of it, which is exactly what's happened with this trying to go after. I, I love looking at all the headlines. You can see all of the narco states that we've created around the world, right? We yeah. we use this as sort of like a Trojan horse. Yeah. Now Syria is yeah. a narco state. How'd that happen? Oh, well, yeah. because we flooded the country with illegal drugs and allowed that to happen with ISIS and Al-Qaeda fighters coming. So we do that in all these other countries. And then we use that as justification to go in with our military or paramilitary and try to stop it. We're, we're trying to stop the illegal flow of drugs from your country. Oh, really? So this is how this happens. So now the Syrian people have to live with this um, as a reality every day. Not only the drugs on the streets, but then American forces in their country and the inability to get cheap medicines and um, electricity. I mean, a whole, and oil and everything else that we steal from you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's an interesting history of this drug. It was developed in the 60s in Germany. It was then basically banned in most countries because of its psychotic effects um, in 1986. But then production began on a kind of counterfeit captagon in Bulgaria. And from 2000 onwards, it was Turkish and Balkan cartels that were smuggling it into the Arab Peninsula. So this is a European problem also. As far as I know, also, there is still uh, illegitimate production in the Netherlands, for example. And what is also interesting is the claim quite recently by Jordan is that there's over 160 manufacturing sites in southern Syria. Now, when I'm talking about manufacturing sites, they can literally be someone's shed, um, you know, attached to their house. And Jordan has, I think, bombed the southern Syrian territory three times, claiming that it's destroying um, these drug manufacturing sites. But if you look at, at the positioning uh, of these so-called manufacturing sites in southern Syria, it's in areas which are effectively still largely under the control of Western-backed uh, armed groups 
and and uh, agents, right? So who is fostering this production if it is actually going on inside southern Syria, where right now Israel and the West is fomenting um, separatism and violence against the state, right? So you know, I, it's it's I just find this whole thing so absolutely heinous what they're doing because it's what they did to Latin American countries declare them narco states under the war on drugs isolate them politically and economically right to bring them to their knees and this is exactly this has been the process since 2012 to isolate Syria to steal its resources to make claims against the Syrian government and effectively against the Syrian people and to punish them for claims that are not proven and are disproven in the case of the chemical weapons claims. And the well, Captagon claims are coming, are generated by the BBC and by the UK Foreign Office and by NED and USAID. I mean, this is why it's so important to have great independent journalists like yourself on this show to be able to shine a light on this because the BBC has a very loud bullhorn and then all of these other media organizations run with those claims. Well, according to the BBC, you know, this is what's happening inside of Syria. And this is justification for an invasion, for sanctions against mm. the Syrian people. And most Americans just kind of go along with their day. They don't understand what's going on. They hear these reports. Well, I hear it's a, I hear it's a narco state. Uh, and this yeah. is why we have to have justification for this to go into these countries. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, thank you so much, Vanessa, for your amazing reporting on this. Um, and by the way, I just want to say, you know, independent journalists are few and far between. And Vanessa is one of the greatest journalists in the world. And if you have, if you want to support independent journalism, Vanessa has a great Substack. It's just beely.substack.com, just her last name, .substack.com. And for $5 a month, you can go over and or just choose a subscription plan if you want to support independent journalism um, instead of giving that money to the New York Times or other places. Um, this is a great place to do it. I'll have a link in the description below. I think we need to stand together and support great journalists like Vanessa exposing these liars. Um, so I know you didn't ask me to do that, but I just want, no. <laughs> I want our audience. Vanessa didn't ask me to do that. I and she's probably embarrassed that I'm doing it, but um, I am. Please Thank go you. and support, support great journalists like Vanessa, and we'll have it linked up in the description. Uh, Vanessa, thank you so much for your great reporting um, and, all, and all of this from Syria right now, from Damascus, Syria, um, and uh, your great writing is, uh, is, is fantastic. Thank you, Vanessa. No, thank you, Clayton, and thank you for always giving us a platform to be able to talk about things that are not talked about in legacy media, so thank you also. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.